Here's an update for you on El Nino. We are headed for one of the strongest ones on record. You're looking at lines there representing 97, 82, 72, and 65. We are now in the top five here in 2015. This O and I value is a measure of different sectors of the Pacific Ocean and their water temperatures, and it's used to clarify or declare an El Nino. And when that number gets above 0.5, an El Nino has occurred. This is a three month running average. When we get the uh, number for October, uh, which we have to wait until the end of November, when we get that number, I anticipate it being a number two or number three here on the list. 97 and 82 were the other strong El Ninos, and they correlate strongly to heavy rain and some very active weather in the winter months. So once that pattern sets in, I expect these warmer than average temperatures to go away. The normal pattern in the winter is for a jet stream that carries storm systems from west to east across the uh, uh, continent that brings in cold air behind them, warm air ahead of them. But in an El Nino winter, the jet splits and it creates warm weather in the northern tier of the nation compared to normal. A stronger subtropical jet from the Pacific moves across the southern tier of the nation, so we actually end up cooler than normal in El Nino winters. And because of all this moisture and energy from the jet, we end up with more rain events than we normally have. Some of the rain could be heavy, and what I'm really most concerned about is possible severe weather this winter. This particular El Nino pattern will likely start to develop later this month, somewhere around the 20th to the 25th. Until then, though, some warmer than normal temperatures are likely to continue. Check out your 8 to 14 day forecast above normal temperatures for the eastern two thirds of the nation and precipitation near or just above normal in the state of Florida.